Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, this session is from my day at Button Willow this past weekend during Bimmer Challenge. Uh, Bimmer Challenge went well, but uh, didn't get the, the results I expected or wanted. Um, so basically bottom line was first session I corded my tire. Um, I had flipped my tires from Chuck Walla and there was all but one tire that was bad, which I mentioned in the last video. But the other front ended up cording the first session at Button Willow. So um, I went ahead in my second session and swapped the two front tires thinking that okay, obviously this is a driver's side um, heavy tire. Uh, like as far as on the wear um, and that didn't help my second session I hear what I thought was a backfire or the tire exploding but the car obviously the tire wasn't flat but it felt, it sounded bad enough to where I decided to pull in just to check sure enough I get to my garage and uh, the tires completely corded on the outside the shoulder and on the actual sidewall there is a complete ring around the tire from where the sidewall blew out or gave out so that pretty much ended my day for competition and uh, rather than pack things up and just go home uh, I went ahead and just threw on the pilot sport fluoresces on my HREs on the car and uh, this is the session that you're seeing so in this session I'm running the PS 4 S's which I was actually very shocked by how good they were um, I was only 0.5 seconds off of my second session yeah that's a corded slick didn't have as much grip for sure and also we only ran like three laps because somebody need, somebody in a Corvette had wrecked into the wall um, but still very uh, very nice and consistent it was like a cup two without the extra grip and um, the one thing I can say about the PS4S that is a negative compared to uh, you know any true track tire is going to be the braking so you know if I try to go hard I really like to late brake right and uh, when I try to do that in the PS4S you know if uh, I don't get on the brakes at the right time or um, put enough force into it I am definitely gonna go way past my apex which you'll see here in a couple turns um, in this session so uh, <clears throat> would I track a PS4S I would only if it was like one or two sessions so let's say you're at the track and your buddy's like you you came to just watch your friends right and your buddy's like hey I'm done for the day my tires are burnt or my car broke do you want my wristband I have like two more sessions on the day I'd be like yeah sure I'll take it you know and go out and hit a session just real quick for fun um, that's the only way I could ever see myself tracking these this is definitely not a tire you're gonna go to discount tire for it and be like hey I want to mount these on my 18 inch track dedicated wheels because uh, I have a track day that is definitely not the use for these but um, you know the grip was great and uh, I can't really knock the PS4S too much for um, the session that I had it just because it did so well so uh, I really think that the PS4S is a great tire um, I've always ran it as like my um, my just on my HREs just you know street driving whatever I think it's a great tire I don't really do too many Canyon runs anymore like I used to back in the day but um, it is a great daily wheel and uh, obviously here uh, running you know half a second slower than a set of used race slicks I think is um, outstanding so but I think the next move is going to be to go ahead and buy a dedicated set of track tires brand new so I've been using used race slicks right finding them from race teams and and throwing them on the the track tires or the sorry the track wheels but uh, I think it's gonna be uh, a better uh, option to go ahead and buy like an AO 52 or an Nanking AR1 or even uh, the new Nanking CR1 which looks identical to the AO 52 um, the one thing I'm hearing about those CR1s is that they have a uh, harder compound which will actually be better for heavier cars 
So if you have a car like an M3 or M4, it's, you know, 3,500 pounds plus, um, that's probably going to be something that you should look into as well as, uh, you know, even some of these 911s. So we'll see uh, Nankang's expand, expanding their, uh, their track tire lineup, which is awesome to see. Um, so I definitely want to get my hands on some and, and go ahead and give it a shot. The one thing about buying used race slicks that I will say is very convenient and nice is that, you know, race teams go out and test every single weekend, right? Or they have an event. And when they do that, they only put very minimal laps or heat cycles on these tires. And when they go to sell them, they're looking for like a fraction of the price, you know? So we're talking like I bought, you know, a set of slicks for, um, 200 bucks 200 bucks for a set of Pirelli DHs uh, that usually cost about two grand so the, the thing is though you don't know what you're getting you don't know how much tire is left um, you don't know how many heat cycles it's been through it's just a shoot crap or a crap shoot I'm sorry and um, you just you know you never know so uh, I'm tired of uh, the unknown and I'd rather have something that I have from the get-go and that I know how many sessions I put on. And also, I think I'm about running a, uh, a uh, squared setup, just so that way I can rotate my tires and manage the wear a lot more and get more track days out of it, rather than having to run uh, or just rotate the backs and the fronts only. Uh, it'll be, it would be nice, but one thing is the setup that I'm thinking about, you know, thinking uh, about getting is the M4 GT4 wheels. And those are about a two month wait because they are made and shipped from Taiwan. So we'll see. I'm not really too sure what's going to happen, but that's just an idea that uh, I've been presented by a friend, Robin, who uh, you're probably watching this video, but uh, appreciate your help. So we'll see. It's just an idea right now, but it's probably going to be something, uh, a move that I make in the near future just so that way I can you know, squeeze the extra life out of a square setup. Uh, probably run like a 295 squared or 305 square. Um, this car has no issues pushing a 305 in the front. So, um, you know, it's not losing a noticeable amount of power with a bigger tire in the front. This car makes really good power as it is. So, um, yeah. Other than that, guys, that'll be it for this video. As I come up on Augie, Augie's my buddy with uh, E30, uh, uh, 325i, it's an M50 swap. It's full DTM suspension, so if you lifted this car up and looked at the bottom of it, uh, well, let's just say this. If you look at it from the outside, you'd think, okay, uh, if you saw it on the street, it's just a clean E30. Looks cool, you know, looks nice. Wheels, you know, got the whole setup. But when you jack this car up and you look underneath it, it looks like a legit DTM race car. Uh, full skeleton DTM control arms, aluminum, um, you know, spherical, tie rod ends, everything spherical, everything solid. Um, you know, just, just the whole complete works. Custom valve Bill Steins. So this car is definitely a beast. Um, except for in the straights. As you see here, I'm closing the gap to the S's because these are wide open throttle. Um, you know, so power is definitely his enemy. But other than that, on a smaller track, this car rips. That'll do it for this video, guys. Uh, I'm pretty much done talking. Uh, if you guys like this video or have any questions, let me know. Drop it in the comments section below. Uh, other than that, I'll talk to you guys later. Take it easy.